All right, so bad news. You're watching this video because you joined the E15 club like myself. Taking a look at our dishwasher, we see we have E15 water tap. You can hear it running, trying to empty that water at the bottom. So what I have here is a Bosch 800 series. Uh, there's the 300, 100. Uh, the insides are pretty much all gonna be the same. So this should apply to you if you're having this issue. But Bosch makes a fantastic dishwasher. If you have one, you probably did a lot of research. You know they're dependable. They're gonna last a long time. But one of the common complaints about it is that E15 error code. So I have fixed this a few times over let's say five years I've owned this machine and I've helped others. And it, it is easy. It's also preventable. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can stop that from happening or at least delay it uh, by a long shot. Uh, but otherwise, we're also gonna take this apart. It's simple to do, so don't worry, it's basic tools. And then we're gonna make sure we clear this code so we can actually do dishes. So right now, I've been able to limp this along. I was getting the error code and I was able to do loads of dishes by just resetting the control panel on the top. Uh, and what I did is I cleaned the filter in there, uh, made sure that these seals were clear, but uh, we're still having issues. But what I'm gonna do first before I start anything and what you should do too is kill the power to your machine. So luckily for me, I have a plug uh, right underneath my sink, uh, but you may have to you know, set, reset your, or uh, turn off your breaker downstairs or whatever method uh, you deem to make sure you're safe. So I just got the plug. I'm gonna pull that out and now we won't have to listen to that machine either. All right, so now the power's off and we're just gonna break this down into three quick uh, little chapters here. First, what we could do to this dishwasher to hopefully get rid of the issue and just skate on by like it never happened. Two, we'll talk about how we can prevent it and why the water gets down there in the first place, setting off that E15 air. Three, we're gonna take this apart. It's not a lot of work and we're actually gonna fix the sensor at the bottom with a float that's measuring that water and tripping it uh, so the air goes away and hopefully we can go many years without it happening again. So first, what I would do if you're having this issue, obviously make sure that everything is clear as far as your filters, you know, take out this piece, wash it off. You know, there's a piece on the bottom, make sure there's no food, a uh, trap down there, broken glass, whatever the case may be. I've already done that, I've tried, uh, but that's not working. You know, make sure this part is clear, that there's nothing trapped in there, and just, and just go all the way around it and, and do your checks. You know, water comes through here uh, and then sprays into the arm that's on this basket that I just took out. Uh, so, so check everything. If you have cleaned everything, you've tried running the machine and it's still giving the same error, not letting you do the dishes, then we probably have to take it apart. Uh, but quickly, how you prevent this from happening, this is how I found out it's happening. Uh, I use the soap and I try to use as little as possible because I've noticed it gets worse if I use too much soap. And as a side tip, see I have the liquid detergent in here. I used to use the powder, you know, just your normal powder. What do I got right now? I got Cascade. So I probably use the Cascade powder. I noticed that when I use the, the powder, it, you clean the dishes fine but it added to this layer that would build up on all these rubber seals much quicker. And that is what's causing the issue. I'm gonna guess 90 plus percent of the time, this is maybe why yours is failing too. So it, it just gets chalky on here and it creates this layer on the seal. And there's another one down on the bottom that you can feel. I can feel right now that mine's kind of crummy and it's got a lot of gunk on there. But what's happening is this machine's running and water is slipping through these seals and draining below. And that is getting caught under your machine. And so what's happening is that water's going below and there's a float down there. It's made out of styrofoam and it's like a little pan that we're gonna look at in a second here. That water fills up and that styrofoam float floats and it hits a little switch and that's what triggers your E15 error code. And while there is water at the bottom of your machine, that air is preventing more water from getting onto your floor, escaping the machine, causing damage to your flooring, your ceilings downstairs, whatever the case may be. So uh, it's a good prevention. Uh, if the code went off, that doesn't mean that water's leaking everywhere necessarily, and, and, and you have a lot more on your hands to take care of. So that's the good news. So 
We got to thank Wash for doing that. It is annoying, but it saves us from much bigger problems. So again, if you want to prevent it, I'm going to take a, you know, like a, a nylon brush with some cleaning solution, maybe some diluted vinegar. Uh, you want to be careful because, you know, vinegar is acidic and it's, you know, not good for rubber and other types of gaskets. So dilute it a bit or, or just find your, your favorite solution, but do this entire seal all the way around. Get this bottom one, you'll, you'll feel it in there. And then what you'll want to do, you'll notice on mine, I have this ridge and it's all that gummy crap that goes all the way around. So I'm going to take just a razor blade and scrape that very gently. I don't want to damage this, uh, the stainless, but just get all that crud off. And if you do that, if you clean the seals and keep them cleaned as you're using the machine, make sure your filters are done or are cleaned. This edging, make sure when you use soap, you're not using the powder or you're, you're just use you know, use a brand that you notice doesn't cause a lot of issues. Uh, change the liquid. Don't use a lot. Uh, and trust me, to clean dishes, you, you don't need to fill this all the way. I, I fill it maybe a quarter full. I shut it. Everything comes out sparkling clean. There's no reason to, you know, to introduce all that to your dishes. So that's how you clean it. Let's get on to fixing this thing now. All right. So now fixing the E15 code once and for all. We are going to remove all these torque screws along this edge in order to remove the front of this dishwasher cover. That's going to allow us to get down to this plate below and remove that as well. And that's where we're going to get access to the bottom to fix that float and that sensor and take any water out of there so that we can run the machine again. So I'll just put the cover down. I'm going to use my drill for this one. Now I wouldn't want to wreck this putting it back on. So at that point I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take this bit and put it on a screwdriver just so I don't over torque it on there. Uh, but these are Torx screws. Uh, I'm using a T20 bit, so that fits that star shape just fine. I don't know why they use these instead of, you know, just regular Phillips. Uh, but you'll need that star shape uh, Torx bit. And uh, 15 would work, but uh, I find 20 works uh, just fine. So let's take those off. All right, so I've removed the screws and I have the door off here to the side, as you can see. And I, there's a very important note. Um, a, not all the screws are the same length. I find that the shorter ones are near the bottom and there were some taller ones near the top. That may not be the case for you, but just keep track of where the long and short screws are uh, as you go around, you know, the perimeter of this door, okay? And one important tip at least for this model, uh, give it a whirl, leave the top four screws in. That is what holds this control panel right here to the door. And that is connected by a lot of wires. So if you remove this, this is, this is going to come off with that door and you're going to have all these wires and you're not going to be able to haul your door away. So again, just make sure you do the sides, Two both sides all the way to the top until you get to that final row and you should be set. All right, on the next part. So underneath this piece that we just took out, so this catches you know, any water and it hangs underneath your door. Uh, there's this also steel plate that just came off that was attached. There's a small lip at the bottom, so that's how you'll put it back on. All right, now we're to the finish line. There's a couple more torque screws holding this on. So we're going to take those two off. And then this part will just pop right off. Now you notice in here that we have, I guess they kept a wiring diagram in here. We can throw that aside. And then there's all this insulation. So that makes sure that uh, this is very quiet running uh, when it's operating. So I'm laying out all the pieces so I know what order to put them back in. But yeah, that's what's really nice about these Bosch units is all the insulation. So actually when this is running, if you're, you know, six feet away, you can't even hear it. Uh, and they actually shine a little red light on the floor. And that's actually how you know it's running. All right, so this is where it comes together. As you can see, 
right back here is a piece of styrofoam. It's a disc. Right now, it is floating on water. Maybe you can see that I'm splashing water in there. And it's hitting this sensor right at the top. Uh, you can actually see that there's water all in there in the back. Hopefully you can see it on camera. But there's a puddle around that whole entire disc that's outside. So it is starting to leak, and this is the part that we need to fix. And so we're going to take that sensor off the top that has the blue and pink wires. We're going to pop that off right now. Let's see if I can get around the camera. So you see these little claws on the bottom. Those are what pop out right there. And on the bottom of this is a switch. See that little white button? So that's what the styrofoam touches, and that's what makes this E15 code go off. So now that I got that switch out of the way, I'm also going to take the styrofoam float out. There it is. And now we are left with a big pool of water that looks kind of nasty in there. And I'm going to use multiple towels and now clean that up. Here's what that disc looks like. So you can see there's notches in it, so that's going to help us determine which way we put this back down. But that's what floats right in there. I don't know if I get paid enough to do this. This is gross. But it's pretty easy and it's much cheaper than uh, paying someone else to do this. And I'll use this moment just to clean this disc off. It's a little slimy and wet. We'll make sure that we are good to go. All right, now we're gonna put the disc back in now that we got all the water cleaned up. So we just gotta get that sensor kind of out of the way so we can put that disc back down. All right, and then once the disc is in position, we can put the sensor back on it. We'll just click it into the two gray spots that's it. Mission accomplished. So that's all there is to it. Now we're just going to put it back together in the reverse order of everything we just did. You may have these little pieces of foam that are kind of hanging out, but you'll know where they go and you can just kind of push them back into place. All right, so let's put it together. I had to fix this dishwasher because it was having issues. All right, so I just put everything back together and I plugged the power back in for the unit. And as you can see, the code is cleared. So now I'm going to take my time, clean the rest of this up, make sure it doesn't happen, at least for a few years, hopefully never, and we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Uh, if you liked the video, please subscribe or hit like and uh, see you next time.